do 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 Yeah. Say again, Amy. Sorry about that.
So, <coughs> so I, I mean, essentially, Sanya, where you draw the line, where you switch from a, a double being not penalty orientated to a double being penalty orientated is entirely up to you. Um, you know, I, I modify Brozel slightly against a 13 to 15 one no trump and modify it completely if it's weaker than 13 to 15. So 13 to 15 is a sort of mid ground. Um, I modify Brozel all the way um, if it's weaker than 13 to 15. But other people draw the line differently. It's up to them. It's just, it's just a matter of ultimately what works for you and your style. Okay?
Good way of losing weight. Do both.
Yeah, I mean, in, in practice, David, if East is 15 to 17, it's unlikely that you're ever going to have the juice here to uh, to bid a slam. Um, but like I said, you may have, um, you could use cap, um, you know, for example, against the 13 to 15 one, no Trump. And now South could have the ace queen of diamonds for example in which case a slam is odds on um, but uh, like I said I, I never play cap so I've not really looked into possible continuations and I've not you know other people who play cap regularly may have more developed systems in place uh, over bids like the two no trump bid here where South can show better hands, more extreme hands, and so on, just in case there's a perfect fit slam there. Okay. I don't, Sanya, I'm sorry, I don't have that many example hands. If I use all the example hands for examples, we don't have any left for practice hands at the end, otherwise you're just playing or practice bidding the hands that I've used as examples and you'll just remember them. So I don't, uh, I don't have that many. Like I said, Sanya, earlier, I think as long as I, I, I almost always would have a hand such as South's if I'm going to make a two-suited overcall. I don't have to have the void, but I would normally have 5-5. Five, five. If I'm only 5-4, I will be slightly stronger than the South hand here. Um, so give me a singleton heart and only four diamonds. Now I might I might leave it until I've got a, a 13 or a 14 count rather than a bare 11. But with 5-5 five, five and a void, um, I, I'm quite happy to, to come in with a, you know, an aceless 11 count. Um, because the chances of partner not having uh, a fit for either of my suits is fairly small. Not impossible, obviously, but uh, th there are no hard and fast rules here. You know, you have to arrive, as long as you and your partner are on the same wavelength in terms of what your minimum standards are, partner assumes you have those minimum standards. And as long as the range isn't too wide, um, then you should, partner should have the confidence to invite when they actually have a hand worth an invitation given the standards for your overcall. Do you see what I mean? Um, if you have too wide a range, like I said, I, I've seen 
I've seen people defending against one no Trump, and and they'll they'll use a bid like that cap two spade bid on on a four four three two hand with an eight count on one hand, and a few hands later, they make the same kind of a bid, but with a, a five five hand and a seventeen count. How how on earth can partner possibly tell whether they have a hand worth an invitation if your range of, of possible hands for making those overcalls is that wide they can't, it's as simple as that and, and therefore they're completely guessing as to whether to invite or um, bid game or bid slam for that matter um, when you make that, that sort of an overcall. That's the point. It's, it's not that, that there's a particular standard. It's that you and your partner are on the same wavelength. That is what matters. If you routinely do it on, you know, a fairly strong hand with 5-4 with and on slightly weaker hands with 5-5, five five, now partner, you know, has a reasonable idea what your minimum standard is. Like I said, I hardly ever do it on five four hands. If I'm if I've got a five four hand, and I'm strong enough potentially to do it, I'm more likely to double, if it's unless it's a strong no trump. Obviously, I never double for penalties against a strong no trump. It's just not worth it. Anybody else got any questions? Did anybody have any questions about Oliver's twist? Um, this is the idea that it's normally over any bids that show unspecified single suits. Um, uh, like I said, it's basically it's the rationale behind the initial responses to a multi-two diamonds. Um, that's where I got the idea for it. Uh, so over a, a brosel double or a don't double or a cap two clubs, the idea is that instead of just bidding an automatic relay, you try and, and actually give partners some idea of your attitude towards uh, towards the hand, if you like. So in other words, you bid the cheapest suit that you wouldn't bid at a higher level. So if you've got a weak hand, you just bid the relay. Because now you're not strong enough that you want to support anything at a higher level. And partner just passes or corrects to their suit. The critical thing is that if you bypass a suit, now you're you're saying that you would support that any suit that you bypass you would support at a higher level than the one that you've bid whereas the suit that you bid you definitely wouldn't support at a higher level so what tends to happen is that you bid your weakest suit but if if in doing that you're bypassing something you're essentially saying that if, if, if partner's got a suit that you've bypassed, you might want to play in game. There's no, point, there's no point bypassing a suit if you're prepared to compete to the three level. You might as well just play it at the two level, in which case just make the relay. But if you've got really good support for diamonds, if partner bids a cap two clubs, and you've got really good support for diamonds and a hand that's potentially interested in playing in five diamonds, now, and you've got a heart shortage, now you bid two hearts. And that says, partner, if you've got hearts, let's play in two hearts. But if you've got diamonds, I'm interested in going further. It doesn't say anything about your spades or clubs, because you haven't bypassed those suits. So if partner's got a black suit, they now correct to the black suit, and now you decide, as as their partner, you decide as to whether to 
invite or just play in that suit. So you're not saying anything about a suit that you don't bypass. You're only saying something about suits that you do bypass. So again, if partner bids are capped two clubs, over there one no trump, and you've got uh, a spade shortage but a big red two suitor, now you would bid two spades. And if partner's just got long spades, then you're probably going to play in two spades. Um, if they've got a red suit, they now bid the red suit because they know that you've got game interest in either red suit because you've bypassed both of them. You didn't bid two diamonds. You didn't bid two hearts. Everybody clear on that? Anybody got any questions about Oliver's twist? Okay, let's move on. Have a look at don't. So the critical difference between don't and cap is that in cap the double is penalty orientated and in don't it is not. So again if you're playing against a strong no trump don't is fine and brosel is fine because your chances of getting a decent penalty against a strong no trump is minimal. Not impossible but um, it's minimal. Um, but if you're playing against a weak or a mini one no trump you really do need to have a penalty double available so Defences like Don't and Brosel are no good against a mini, no one, a mini one no trump, or a weak no trump for that matter. So these days you ought to be prepared um, and have... And, and your defence against one no trump should depend on the strength of the one no trump that your ops are playing. So it's having an agreed minimum standard and not having too wide a range above that minimum standard that you can be. So again, don't is fairly simple and it's very popular. <coughs> Again, the double's not penalty orientated, it just shows any single suited hand. And then the two level suit bids show either various two suitors or a weak hand with six plus spades. So that's fine if you're not going to play Oliver's Twist. If you want to try Oliver's Twist, then it's a completely different way of bidding over the, the don't double. Now, basically... If you've got a reasonable hand, you bid your shortest suit.
Oops. You need the bottom line here is that you need to look at Oliver's twist uh, properly. You can look it up on on my Precision website if you've never come across it before. Um, uh, you need to look at it and try it a bit, and uh, you'll quickly get into uh, how to proceed um, when partner does anything other than bid the relay which would normally be any weak hand or a hand that's only got game level interest in some suit other higher or more expensive than the relay suit there are lots of implications depending on on what partner bids um, and what your hand is that you can perhaps even start Q bidding uh, but normally you would indicate with your if they bypassed your suit you would indicate with your rebid as to whether you're lower or upper range um, probably best to um, to bid game if you're lower range um, since they've got game interest in, in your suit if they've bypassed it and if you can bid an in if you can bid your your suit between the suit that they bid and game level you use that with a with a higher range hand and that gives you more space for slam exploration and so on. Any questions on don't before we move on? Don't's fairly simple, um, uh, and essentially the you know the two level bids that show two suited hands. It's a slightly different scheme to cap, um, but essentially it's achieving. As I said before, it's achieving the same things in a slightly different way. It's just showing slightly different combinations of two suitors. Okay, moving on. Well, no, two spades immediately. Sorry, if you're playing don't, my understanding, and bear in mind, I never play don't. Um, uh, my understanding is that two spades immediately uh, is a weak hand with six plus spades. So actually double and then bidding spades is probably stronger than an immediate two spades. That's my understanding. Two spades... Two spades immediately over one no trump is definitely a weak hand. Yeah, that's right. So the Brosel double is exactly the same as the don't double. Um, there's essentially no difference at all.
pinpoint astro is the basis of quite a few um, defences to one note trump uh, that I've seen. Um, So, the three level suit bids are, are the, the thing that Brosel has that Don't and Cap don't have, which is the ability to show three suited hands. In the standard system for Brosel, um, you bid your shortage and partner just corrects to the suit, uh, to one of the other suits. Um, in my system, um, we always bid the suit below shortages when we're showing a shortage like that. Uh, in a three suited hand um, or when we're making a splinter so for consistent with the rest of the system we do it slightly differently we bid the suit below the shortage rather than bid the short suit but it doesn't matter there's no there's no significant advantage in doing it either way um, it's only for consistency with the rest of the system is the only real reason that we do it um, Again, if you're playing against a strong no trump, uh, the chances of you having more than a game is very small. Um, when somebody's got 15 to 17 on your right. <coughs> so bidding your short suit is fine, um, if, especially if you don't play OCP. So, so, and this applies to don't as well, of course, um, that uh, assuming that you've got your agreed minimum standards for the sort of strength hand that the double is showing, um, partner can choose to pass for penalties if they've got, you know, 11 plus balanced. Uh, that means that they probably do have reasonable support for your suit. Um, and since you're going to be leading, um, there's a good chance that you'll be able to uh, to get a significant penalty against this one no trump. Um, but if they're weaker than that, uh, or they want to find out what suit you have, then um, they either just relay if that's the method that you want to use, or they can use Oliver's twist if you agree to use that method. Um, <coughs> so, I mean, for example, if, if you're playing Brozel, uh, if you have competitive Lebensol in your arsenal, um, then over two clubs, two diamonds, or two hearts, uh, if you're playing Brozel, then, then two no trump will be Lebensol. But um, over two spades, two no trumps wouldn't be Lebensol because it simply says which minor do you have. And most often, it's just a hand without support for spades and uh, with better support for either minor, um, in which case you're just going to pass whatever opener bids. But it may be a bit like the hand that we saw here, um, a hand where you want to get a bit more information about partner's hand. Uh, and depending on how the fit is, you may bid game or not. So two no trumps is, is simply a forcing relay asking which minor it is. It's not game forcing. It doesn't uh, promise 
to bid on over whichever minor partner bids. Essentially, I, this reference to range beta there is uh, we use asking bids in the system I play, um, and range beta is a means of establishing whether a partner's minimum or maximum, and if their maximum or upper range, uh, how many controls they have, rather than how many aces. So it's a bit like a combination between a range finder and uh, Roman keycard Blackwood. The difference is, is that you haven't agreed a suit at this stage, so over the range beta response, you've got to set the final contract. Um, otherwise, partner can't tell which suit it is you're agreeing. So again, as I said before, if I'm Personally, if I'm playing against a 13 to 15 one no trump, we play modified Brosel, and it's against 13 to 15, it's slightly modified in the sense that the double is penalty orientated but might be single suited rather than strong balanced. Um, and uh, against a weak or a mini no trump, it's definitely totally penalty orientated um, and again could be either just as, a, just as a strong single suitor you might double for penalties on the basis that uh, you're going to get a tempo on the opening lead to start establishing your long suit uh, and if you're strong um, strong semi-balance particularly um, it's unlikely that Ops are going to be able to come to seven tricks before you can establish your suit if you're strong with a, have a strong single suitor. So again, over one no trump, two spades, playing Brosel. Um, Two no trumps has a defined meaning, but in every other case where you make a two level overcall, <coughs> um, uh, two no trumps doesn't have a defined meaning, and so we use this as, as Lebensol. Any questions on Brosel and modified Brosel? Again, I, I make no apologies for covering that in slightly more detail. Um, But for the people who are following my precision course, uh, that's the standard defense to one no trump. We teach them um, and encourage them to play, but obviously they don't have to. Quite a few of us also play suction, which I'm going to come to in a minute. No questions on Brazil? Okay, let's move on to suction. I have to say, right at the outset, there are lots of different versions of suction. What I'm going to explain to you today is the standard published version of suction. But there are psycho suction, twerb suction, all sorts of different, I mean literally, there's probably 10 different versions of suction and some of them are significantly different to what I'm going to show you today uh, they're much more difficult to defend against for your ops but they're also much more difficult for you to understand and to work out the continuations and they're much riskier as well
So that's that's the two level suit bids there. So the two level suit bids show either a single suitor with the suit above the suit that you bid. So you, effectively the suit that you bid is a transfer. Partner completes the suit. And if you've got the single suitor, um, you then pass. If you've got the two seater in the next two suits, you relay in the suit above, and that shows the two seater in your bidding the lowest or the cheapest of your two suits. So if, if they open one, though, Trump, and you bid two clubs showing either diamonds or both majors, partner bids two diamonds. If you've got diamonds, you pass. If you've got both majors, you bid two hearts, and now partner passes or corrects, or raises. Um, if they've got really strong support for diamonds, then they do something other than bidding diamonds. So that's like a super accept. Any questions so far about suction? I haven't quite finished explaining it yet, but there's two other bits to standard suction. So double and, and two no trumps show the two non-touching two suited combinations. One no trump double shows diamonds and spades, and one no trump two no trump shows clubs and hearts. The other option you have is to keep double as penalties and to have one no trump, two no trumps to show any non-touching two suitors. So it's either one no trump, two no trumps is either diamonds and spades or clubs and hearts and partner has to work out which you have. So there's an element of risk there. Um, but... Uh, it's fairly easy to work out continuations for that. The advantage of that is that it then means you can play suction against any level of one no trump. And there are some versions of, of suction where, where the double is unequivocally for penalties. Twerb suction is, I think, one of them. Um, So over the two level suit bids, so so this this form, the standard form of suction, is very easy to play against because you never ever have the suit that you actually bid. That's the key thing. And, it's, and the suit that you bid is forcing unless partner is weak with good length in that suit, in which case they're allowed to pass. So... Standard suction is, is easy to understand and it's easy to implement, but it's also very easy for, for the, the one no trump pair to actually defend against because A, they know that you never have the, bid that you, the suit that you actually bid and B, they know that partner is gonna, your partner is going to bid something. Um, they're going to make a relay and you're now then going to pass or bid the next suit up and at that point they will know exactly what you have and can then decide whether to uh, to compete or intervene or double for penalties or whatever um, so it's easy for you to implement but it's also easy for them to defend against The difference is, with most of these other versions of, of, 
uh, suction is that very often you can have the suit that you bid and the bid isn't forcing so in other words um, I, I've never I've never played the other versions of suction but um, you know you might have a version of suction where one of the trump two clubs shows either clubs or both red suits and partner has to try and decide what you have and either pass two clubs or bid two diamonds and you have to work out you know what pass means what a relay means and so on so if you're not going to play double as penalties and one no trump two no trumps as being a non-touching two suitor then the scheme I've shown you there is only really applicable against a strong no trump because against a weak or a mini no trump you really do need to keep double as penalties um, but you could play you could play double as penalties against a weak or mini no one no trump uh, and two no trumps is either non-touching two suited combination and against a strong no trump you play double as diamonds and spades and two no trumps as clubs and hearts that's perfectly permissible uh, and that works quite well any questions on suction in fact any questions on anything I've covered this week I apologize if I haven't covered your particular favorite defense to one no trump if it's not one of those um, but I said there are literally hundreds of defenses to one no trump and I can't possibly cover them all um, uh, I think don't and cap accounts for probably 80% of the known universe um, oh Sanya you're so money supermarket So there are three yes the anchor suit is the transfer suit basically um, I, I, I'm not aware that suction is has any kind of a problem where um, the ACBL is concerned um, like I said I mean I never play in ACBL events so it doesn't really I don't couldn't really care less if it does but um, I, I'm not aware that there's a problem with suction in North America um, uh, if anybody who plays in ACBL competitions knows please shout up and tell me um, I don't know uh, somebody else will have to give you that answer I, I, I couldn't care less what the ACBL allow and don't allow because I absolutely refuse to play in anything that they sanction because um, their attitude towards bids bidding is so extremely incomprehensible to anybody outside North America um, that uh, it's just not worth it um, same applies to the EBU, the English Bridge Union. Um, I, I won't, you know, and I mean, I live in the UK, but uh, one of the reasons I gave up playing face to face bridge is because <coughs> the EBU have a fairly similar attitude to the ACBL towards bids like multi and so on. Um, and it's so stifling of developments in bridge that uh, I refuse. Thank you, Sanya. I, I take it from that that nobody actually definitively knows whether the ACBL does or doesn't allow suction. Um, 
look it up on, on Google because I'm sure that the Bridge Guys article on, on suction um, will, will probably tell you whether it's allowed or not in North America. Okay, so critical things is there are lots of defences and, and you've got to choose it does not what? It doesn't, ACVL doesn't allow suction. More fool then. Next they're going to ban the weak no Trump. Oh, does it not? Okay, thank you very much, Sonia. Um, I'm sure if you if you actually search for, you know, does ACBL allow suction, you'll probably get something that will actually tell you. Um, it's probably best to assume that the ACBL doesn't allow anything. <laughs> okay, so um, consider the first thing to consider is whether your agreed defence is uh, can be used sensibly against all strength of one no trump openings and if it doesn't then you need to have an alternative uh, lined up and agreed with your partner secondly does your agreed defence give you enough options for showing different kinds of hands that it covers all of the hands where you think you're likely to want to intervene and that for the most part that's single suited hands and two suited hands and the last thing is to have an agreement with your partner about the minimum standards of, of the kinds of hands you're going to use or going to have when you use these two suited overcalls particularly um, and, and you need to have that because if you don't then, then partner has no clue as to whether to invite, whether to bid game, whether just to pass um, and so on uh, you can't have too wide a range it's a little bit like um, playing Michaels as weak or strong but not intermediate that, that means if you do that that means the partner knows exactly what to do they assume that you're weak if you're strong you can now invite um, again because, because the bid's effectively forcing um, if, if you could if you could use Michaels with any hand from a 5 count up to an 18 count then partner hasn't got a clue what to do they could be sat there with an intermediate hand and they don't know whether just to compete and similarly if they just compete you don't know whether to invite because your range is so wide um, if you're intermediate you don't know, so it's best if you're if you're intermediate just to overcall, rather than be using something like Michaels. It's very similar situation with this. If you give yourself too wide a range for these two suited overcalls, particularly, um, then uh, you just end up in the dark with partner, and that's probably the single commonest fault that I see when I'm watching. Um, intermediate and even some advanced pairs playing that they they have too wide a range for um, the hands that they use to intervene against uh, ops one no trump okay any questions um, and, and lastly do discuss the continuations um, you know, a lot of people just say, oh, well, you know, yes, okay, um, partner bids two clubs, and that shows clubs and hearts, and that's it, and they think that's the end of it, but actually you, you have to think about how you're going to proceed when you want to compete, when you want to invite, 
uh, you know, when you want to, you know, show a long suit of your own, uh, and if you do show a, a, an unbid suit that partner hasn't got, is it forcing? Is it just competitive? You need to think about all these things and discuss them with your regular partner. Because if you don't, you're doing yourself a disservice. That last thing is absolutely critical. Some people think that they're almost legally obliged to intervene when ops open one no trump. That's not the case. If you do it on, on hands where you actually don't have a very good reason for intervening, very often all you end up doing is just giving information to ops. If you, if you intervene with a two-suited overcall and they end up playing the hand, your hand is almost an open book and, and they can work out you know, the likely distribution of, of half the hand before a single card's being played. So make your intervention count. Um, and if you've not really got anything to say, then just pass. It's perfectly okay to do that. Uh, I've said before, somebody, not me, somebody who was a lot more expert in this game than me once said that um, the single bid that gained them more points than anything else was pass. And, and generally speaking, you'll find that is true. People are too quick to, to just try and remind everybody at the table that they're actually still sat there by feeling they have to say something all the time. Thank you very much, Barry. Oh, that's quite interesting. It's allowed against a strong club or a strong two clubs, but not against one no trump. That's almost schizophrenic. Weird. Okay, thank you very much, Barry. A definitive uh, ruling, anyway. Okay. I've got a few hands for us to practice. We've got three quarters of an hour, so can I have four victims, please? Well, I don't want to have too much of a go at Americans. Um, it's not their fault, um, after all. Like I said, the, EB, the English Bridge Union are just as bad as the ACBL. Uh, and I'm a UK resident. Um, I, I find it, and it's thankful, I'm thankful that 90% that of the world, 90% of the bridge world, um, don't follow what the ACBL and the EBU do. In 90% in of the world, um, there are absolutely no restrictions on whether you can use suction or not. And certainly the World Bridge Federation doesn't have any problems with it, that I'm aware of. Four victims, please. Come on, guys. Time is money. Possibly better if you sit down as a pair, but if you don't end up sitting down as a pair, um, please have a quick discussion with your partner about what defence to one no trump, what uh, defence against one no trump you're going to play. Thank you, Barry. Three more, please. Come on, guys, don't be shy. Oh, Barry and Sonia in harness. Excellent. We've got a precision pair east west. They'll be playing a th variable one no trump. <coughs> A 
Come on, guys. I'm not going to sit here all night. Come on, Mr. Loot. Get in that south seat. I'll boss them if they're not careful. <laughs> Naomi's going to get her baseball bat out if somebody doesn't sit north-south soon. She'll be wrapping you over the knuckles. Come on, Esther. Mr. Walkworth, come on. Are you there, John? Michael, do you want to sit south? Somebody, please. Because if not, if not, I'll do it. And it's no fun for me because I can see all 52 cards and I wrote the hands in the first place. Okay. So, north-south, please just agree what defence you're going to use. Um, there's something a bit weird going on here. Um, I think, Sanya, would you do me a favour? No, I don't know what's going on here. Um, Sanya, would you mind just assuming that actually North is the, is the dealer here? Uh, and so East, can you just pass initially? And West, can you f ignore the fact that East has passed? Um, the, the north was supposed to be the dealer on this hand, but it's somehow got switched around. So, Sonia, just pass, please. Um, no, Sonia, just pass, please. Just, Sanya, God. Sanya, just pass. Right. South will pass and West will pass. And we will ignore the fact that East, South and West have passed initially. Okay, Sonia, now you're free to bid whatever you like. Okay, so East West are playing suction here, I gather. So two diamonds is either single suited with hearts or both black suits. So West bids two hearts, which is essentially to play if East has hearts. If West has a hand where they've got game level support for hearts, then they have to do something other than bid two hearts.
Okay, well done. Um, can we have a lead, please, from north? Um, I don't think there's anything in the play here. Just claim your nine tricks, Barry. Um, obviously, it's fairly easy for West to place most of the high cards here. Um, but uh, okay, the only observation I'd make here is that. Yeah, but that's, about, that's fine, Sonia. It's no problem. Um, the thing to bear in mind here is that if East West really had their um, their agreements nailed down, the two hearts bid definitely gives a message to East. It's a bit like Oliver's twist almost, that, that actually they're not interested in playing in game in hearts otherwise they would potentially do something other than bidding two hearts they might give preference between the black suits if if they potentially had a hand worth an invitation in hearts so when west bids two hearts East now probably actually oughtn't to bid three hearts because they've got a fairly minimum uh, strength to diamond bid in the first place. And okay, they've got seven card hearts, but they're semi balanced, they haven't got any shape. Um, they've got lots of, you know, queens and jacks. Uh, and so actually. If West doesn't have a hand worth an invitation, it's not really worth East inviting over two hearts. And yes, three hearts is probably going to make, um, but you know there would be scope for going off in three hearts. You know, give give North the Jack of Hearts and the Queen of Clubs, and give South the King of Hearts. And now you might well be losing two heart tricks, two diamond tricks. Uh, sorry, two heart. Sorry, a heart, two heart tricks, um, a diamond, and two spade tricks. So safer to play this hand in two hearts. Um, but again, it depends. This is what I'm talking about: having all the inferences behind whether West bids two hearts over two diamonds or whether they bid something else and if they do, what they do. Okay, any questions or comments? Okay. No, I think it just shows more strength, um, Barry. And, and yes, possibly a better suit than they have. But it's it's really more strength, more shape. It's not that two hearts has to be a heart shortage. Um, it's just not a hand where where West has anything worth an invitation in hearts. And and given that, just hang on a minute. Let me just work it out. No, it's not. Sorry, these have all got switched round somehow. Um, uh, let me just think. No, again, sorry, can we have three passes initially just to get east of the, as the dealer? Sorry about this. Um, I don't know why it's worked out like this. I can't, no. There's, not, there's nothing I can do. So again, just imagine that east was the dealer here, please. I'll sort it after afterwards. Sorry, just one second, Amy. Oh, really? That's interesting. That's interesting, Roger. I wasn't aware. I wonder why they've done that.
Hmm, okay. And nobody, I take it nobody's complained about it. All right. Still doesn't help anybody, though, if you're teaching. Okay, so one no Trump uh, would be 13 to 15 here. Two spades. Uh, North, South, what are you playing against... Uh, Oh, you're playing cap and don't. Okay. <laughs> so two no trumps asking which minor. Three diamonds, obviously just showing diamonds. Um, okay, um, claim 10 tricks, please. Um, in fact, you're probably going to make 11 tricks here. Um, Okay, north south. What would an immediate three spades over two spades have shown? And what happened to your agreed minimum standards here? Yeah, I think so. So this is sort of thing is. If you don't ask about the minor and just bid three spades immediately, is that invitational? Is asking about the minor um, and then bidding spades stronger or weaker than that? And if you want to force, what do you do? Okay. Um, clearly something went slightly wrong here. Well, and like I said, it gives North a more complete picture of South's hand. It's it's just, you know, when partner opens one spade, you don't immediately know everything there is to know about the hand. You might want more information. Same applies when they bid two spades. You know, if North was, sorry, if South was stronger than they are, with this shape, would they bid four diamonds rather than three diamonds? So can North take it that three diamonds is showing a rock bottom minimum and a hand that's really not particularly interested in four spades? Well, oh, okay. I mean, don't forget, you're going to make 11 tricks here on a hand that's not even fitting very well, apart from the spade support. You know, you've got the ace, king of hearts opposite a void. Don't forget, there's, there's quite a big uh, advantage for declarer 
knowing where all the high card, the outstanding high cards are, because they're all with East. Okay, anybody else got any questions or comments? Um, again, this is this is something you have to work out with your partner, uh, Mephisto. I, you know, um, Andrew, it's it's not. Uh, North South here are playing cat, which I never play unless I'm in a pickup game. And partner insists on it. <coughs> you have to work out. That's why I asked the question. Is is asking for a minor and then bidding the major stronger than a direct suit rate of a raise of spades? Well. Um, again, you <laughs> I, I, I would, I wouldn't bother bidding two no trumps and then supporting spades if I didn't have an invitational hand. That's the point. If I was weak, if I was, if I was weak with, with a tolerance for spades, I would just pass two spades. So there's no way I'm going to have this sequence of two spades, two no trumps, three diamonds, three spades if I've got a weak hand. So, so to my mind, three spades is definitely uh, invitational here. It's not, I'll bid two no trumps in case partner's got a better minor. You know, if I had clubs and spades, I wouldn't. I wouldn't go the route that that North has gone here. But I said you have to work out all these continuations with partner. That's what working out a system involves. You have to sit down and actually work them out and discuss them. Um, okay, we've had a had that one. I think probably it's safe to assume uh, oh, this is weird. Just excuse me a second. No, no, sorry, different. Yeah, but again, it's it's down to individual preference here. Um, assume that you're passing, Sanya. And I think South will open this. Sanya. Thank you. No, I, that's not true, but the dealers got mucked up on all these because of the thing Roger's mentioned. Are, are they not doing anything about it, Roger, by the way? No, you don't want diamonds on these times, but... So, this is again suction for East West or not ok so two, two diamonds is either oh you just you just tell a yellow 
or email BBO support or something. Um, if they've known about it a week, I'm assuming that they're going to do something about it. It's an absolute killer if you're on a teaching table with prepared hands. So two, so two diamonds, Sanya is showing either hearts or both minors. So you have to assume that partner's got single side suited hearts. And you don't have a hand where you're really wanting to invite. So just bid two hearts. Yeah, but they must realise, Roger, that all the teachers, or most of the teachers, and all the people running clubs are still using the Windows client with their blessing. If they're going to do things that cripple the Windows client, that's not really very sensible. They'd be better off forcing everybody, everybody onto the browser client. Okay. It's a bit of a marginal hand, this. Um, yeah, well, there you go. I'm a stick in the mud. <laughs> Actually, I mean, I could, I could switch to the Windows client now because Alert Helper will deliver my lessons. I'm just uh, stuck in my ways. Yeah, that's right. Okay, so I've been a dinosaur for the last 20 years, Shirley. Um, okay, so here East has a sort of marginal hand give them slightly better hearts and they'd probably do something to invite in hearts here but at the end of the day they're sat underneath the one no trump opener um, so the chances are that finesses are not going to be going their way definitely John um, But finesses in hearts are going to be going their way. <laughs> well, the, the complex course will be following straight on from the end of the simple one, Roger. So hopefully we'll get through it before they turn off the Windows client. We'll just have to see. And I might... I might even, if that's the case, I might even wait until they turn off the Windows client before starting the next simple course. If it's going to cause a problem for you if they change midway through a course. Um, okay, so in practice you might well make... Uh, Yeah, well, it's a 13 to 15 one no trump. Oh, no, it's not. Yeah, it is. Yeah, I think... I rather think, actually, last year... OK. Um, uh, I think, actually, I, I should have said that all of the one no trumps are around about 15 counts. So it doesn't really matter whether you're playing 13 to 15 or... 15 to 17. <laughs> okay, Charlene, I hear you. Um, 
so yeah, I think assume that all the one no trump openers are about a 15 count, so it doesn't really matter. But forget 10 to 12 one no trumps for this lesson. Um, I think they're all round about 13 to 15 or 15 to 17. Okay, so in practice, East-West are probably going to make 10 tricks here because the hearts are behaving um, and the fact that the, the spade queen is wrong doesn't matter because it's just going to get roughed. So they're going to lose two clubs and a, and a diamond, but uh, they don't know that that's the case for sure. Um, on balance... Uh, it just happens to be that the hand's favourable. Uh, if you look at the east-west hand, you wouldn't necessarily want to be in four hearts. Any questions, comments, complaints? Okay. Um, where are we? South passes and west opens one no trump, please. Yes, I, I mean, actually, it's funny, Sanya asked me something um, about this earlier on before the lesson. <coughs> I think the website covers it, and I'm, I normally cover it during the lesson. Uh, basically, if, if ops are playing don't or brosel, and they double, and they double R1 no trump, Basically, what I would recommend is that um, responder, if it's alerted as a don't or a brosel double, i.e. it's a single suitor, rather than penalties, um, then if they are weak enough, if responder is weak enough, that they can anticipate the double potentially being passed for penalties, um, because obviously partners, one of Trump openers range is known. If responder is weak enough that that's a significant possibility, um, then basically they treat it as a penalty double. If it means that they, uh, you know, if they've got a five card suit that they can bid at the two level, then they just do it. And that's always going to be a rescue. If they're strong enough that they don't really care whether it gets passed for penalties or not, or they think it's unlikely, then they would normally pass uh, and wait for the bidding to come back round them, by which point they'll have a much better idea how the hand is lying, because opener, not opener, the, over, the doubler will have bid their suit, and they'll have a better idea. And, it's, and now we're in a leaven sold situation rather than an intro situation. Um, if responder passes over the double, hoping that their left-hand opponent is going to relay uh, or use Oliver's twist or whatever, and it gets passed for penalties, now opener has to decide whether to redouble and try and wriggle out into um, a fit or whether to stand the double. And again, these are, these are um, continuations that you have to agree with partner. Okay, so back to this hand. Um, two hearts was what, David?
Sorry, just bear with me a second, guys. Um, David, what was what was two hearts here? I can't remember what you guys are playing. Hearts and a minor. Okay. Um, fair enough. Uh, two spades. Opposite. A 13 to 15 one no trump. Yeah, it's okay. Um, if two spades is just competitive and East West are playing a 13 to 15 one no trump, then I would suggest that West is probably worth um, an invite. So here, over two spades, West could bid two no trumps, Leban Sol, East bids three clubs, and now three spades is a, a solid invitation in spades. Um, that at least gets the invitation out. Whether you actually end up bidding the game or not is a matter for, uh, for East West. Ah, right, okay. Um, again, over two hearts, I, I mean, your length in hearts would be a worry, uh, Sanya. Um, you'd almost be happier if you only had two hearts. Now it's much less likely that East West are going to find a, a rough. Um, So two spades is, is not unreasonable, and in fact, as the cards lie, you're in good shape because good defence, you're going to get the ace of hearts, a diamond through, a heart rough, and you've still got the ace of clubs to lose. So four hearts, four spades rather, is actually going to go off. Yep, fair enough. That's fine. As I said, I've got no, no great problem here. Um, I think East is on the verge of being worth an invitation. Uh, certainly opposite a 15 to 17 no trump, they're worth an invitation. Um, against 13 to 15, I think two spades is reasonable. And West is mm, nearly worth an invitation over a free bit of two spades. But as the cards lie on this particular hand, two spades is the best spot against good defence. Any questions, comments? Okay. Oops, sorry. Um, almost impossible. <laughs> Normally, it's, it's, it's traditional that normally if you've got a, a small slam on, um, in fact, north-south have got a grand slam on, uh, it's traditional that you have more high card points than your opponent if you're going to bid to a small slam, let alone a grand slam. Um, this one, north-south bidding to... Uh, seven diamonds would be spectacular. Seven diamonds, really nice, really nice contract to reach here. So there's no chance of them getting there. Even South, you know, South has quite a nice um, sorry, I'll just actually put that previous hand back. Sorry, I'll I'll come back to the, 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 the next hand in a minute. Um, somebody pointed out that North South can make seven diamonds. Um, 
and complain on didn't complain but they asked how they should reach it uh, but North South have only got a combined 17 count it's quite difficult to bid to a slam I don't think uh, um, cap really helped uh, north south here I think uh, losing trick count Michael wash your mouth out with soap um, the trouble is mm, south doesn't know which minor uh, north has got yes yeah, possibly I, I mean I think in some respects it would help north south this is this goes actually <coughs> very well to illustrate that that some methods work better on some hands than other methods uh, and here if north south were using brosel and north was bidding two diamonds rather than uh, two hearts and south immediately knew that there was at least a nine card diamond fit on um, and that you know they, they got a much better idea in terms of the fit of the two hands rather than hearts and a minor where they're left wondering whether it's clubs and whether it's diamonds um, but there's no way you're ever going to envisage a perfect fit here uh, not to the extent of bidding a slam. Okay, next hand. Last one, and then we'll stop for the night. Um, assume that uh, everybody passes round to south, please. South is the dealer on this. Yeah, I mean, the other thing, Shirley, to, to, to point out is that given that East, on that previous hand, given that East's two spades is only competitive, you could bid a fast three clubs over, three, over two spades, if you're playing competitive Levensol, a fast three clubs, um, which implies that you've got support for both minors, um, and that might uh, that might get you know, or you could bid four clubs or five clubs. Um, although the vulnerability is a bit off for that, uh, but you're never going to anticipate partner being six six one naught. Yeah, I think uh, um, John is still order combat. Uh, tomorrow so I'll be covering his practice at um, 9pm UTC tomorrow so again this is a assume sorry how, how do you mean Shirley yeah, 5pm 5, 5 New York time in IAC. So 10pm UK, 9pm UTC. No, this one no trump is 13 to 15, David. Or 15 to 17. You decide. No, no 10 to 12. Yeah, but you don't know, do you? You know, this is... But but you have to assume that partner is probably intermediate with less extreme distribution. Yeah, you know, in which case they'd be stronger than they actually were, but with not quite extreme distribution. But a 6-6 six, six hand has playing strength, you know, has strength all of its own. 
So two hearts was suction. Two spades is not interested in going further necessarily. So now West has to decide whether he wants to invite or not. So he invites just in case. <sighs> okay, another useful hand this for explaining what I mean about agreeing strengths and so on. Uh, okay, just claim nine tricks, uh, Sanya, please. The point I'm going to make here is that I don't think East should be accepting this invitation because really they need West to be strong enough that they they might be doing something other than bidding two hearts here. Yeah, East has got a quacky semi-balanced nine count. And okay, they've got a fair amount of spade support, but their king of hearts is, is potentially badly placed. Yeah, but jacks are worth nothing in a suit contract. Well, that remains to be seen, John. <laughs> so, over two hearts, North could have bid three diamonds, I suppose. Transfer Levin Sol. Three diamonds being a transfer to hearts. Just wanting to compete in hearts. Because the one thing North knows is that West cannot have hearts because he's either got spades or both minors if they're playing suction. But with a three count, three diamonds is possibly a bit dodgy. So again, here, I jacks are not much use in a suit contract, Sanya. In a suit contract, you want top tricks, quick tricks. Um, lots of slow tricks like queens and jacks are much less useful in a suit contract. Much. Wonderful. 145, that's impressive, John. So have you learnt lots of stuff over the last few weeks? <laughs> okay guys it's midnight um, hopefully you found this useful so next week we see the other side of this particular coin So we will have a proper look at intro next week. Um, so that's that's my favourite defence against one no trump doubled, um, which goes to the questions that Sonia and John were asking earlier on. Um, so do come next week. Again, there are loads of wriggles over one no trump doubled. Um, I've only really got the time to show you one of them, which is the one that I know best. Yeah, I must admit, if you're playing anything other than a strong no trump, next week is mandatory. Uh, and to be honest with you, even if you are playing a strong no trump, it's useful to have a defence against one no trump doubled uh, ready. 
as I was saying to Sanya earlier on, um, if you've got 10 points opposite 10 points, that hand will actually play a lot better generally than 17 points opposite 3 points. Because with 10 opposite 10, you've got much more opportunity to get across to partner's hand to take finesses and so on. Uh, with a 17 count opposite 3 high card points, dummy is going to be pretty much useless to you. Your chances of getting across to dummy at all or more than once is minimal. Um, so actually, you know,